Hey everybody, welcome back to Fastware. So today we have a uh, second year university assignment, which I saw one of the uh, other YouTubers, um, which do programming uh, showing. Uh, this was um, from the channel uh, called The Channel um, and a uh, link to his video uh, will be in the description. So he presented uh, he had some code review, which somebody sent out for him. So, uh, and then he uh, did a video of how he would implement uh, such a video in C++, uh, such a, an assignment, sorry, uh, in C++ uh, himself. Um, there is um, full description of the problem on, uh, on his video. So you can go and watch it um, and then come back to this video. Uh, to actually um, compare and contrast. But what I tried to do is just grab um, uh, test cases from uh, his video and uh, follow verbatim his implementation, uh, how he did that. It uh, was some very weird hash table implementation uh, which he was doing. Uh, and what I tried to do is, as I said, verbatim copy his code. So Chano, if you're watching, uh, if I made any mistakes or misrepresented your example, something is not quite right, please do let me know. Um, but yeah, so his take was uh, basically implement this hash table and have an entry of data and a status. Um, so data is up to 10 characters um, um, string, and then the status is either never used uh, tombstone or occupied. Uh, as you can see, these strings populating here. So you basically have uh, main functions for add and delete, uh, and then a print. Uh, this one is slightly different than what he did. He just um, did straight to um, uh, standard out um, uh, printing the occupied uh, entries. That's what the assignment was uh, asking for. But what I do is basically returning a string because I have a benchmarking code, uh, which in the debug mode uh, basically compares um, the results produced by um, this implementation versus the expected results. There's also the get index, which is the um, like a last character uh, from zero to 26. And this is directly copied uh, from what he did. So if you're looking for his explanation, how he implemented his code and why he made certain decisions, um, go watch his video first. Um, but uh, so the uh, main is sort of a, the channel main, which given an input produces a, a string stream, uh, tokenizes it, uh, extracts the first character, takes the substring, and then basically runs through add or delete and then returns that print. So here is the channel impl, which basically calls the channel main and uh, returns the value. So that is uh, his implementation. And then uh, also I have mine. So before I'll show you mine, what I'll do is just um, run again uh, the benchmark and I can run through uh, five repetitions between his implementation and mine. And here it is. It will run uh, five repetitions. Um, and here we go. We finished. Um, so I don't have implementation at different scales. So uh, from like 100 iterations to like uh, 10,000 or something, because I, I tried to do that. I looked at it, but there was no variation. So the scaling was perfectly linear uh, between those uh, different uh, scales of the problem. So I didn't uh, do that at all here, um, not to uh, pollute the result space. So uh, Chano's implementation takes about, um, what is it, 156 uh, microseconds, and mine take about 14. So about 150 microseconds, so about 14. Uh, we have uh, roughly 11x performance difference between those two implementations. And let me show you how I did that. So uh, the main thing here is um, I did what Chana didn't want to do. I created a uh, enum 
um, which has this occupied never used in tombstone. I place the occupied at the um, very first, as in being zero, one, and two, um, because I compare occupied um, to uh, compare this uh, enum everywhere. Um, uh, so if you're occupied, you cannot insert, or if it's occupied, you have to delete. Um, the reason for it is because CPUs have special instructions when comparing to zero, and it's always faster to compare to zero rather than to any other value. So I chose to arrange it this way. Now, the next uh, piece of um, important information here or important structure is this entry structure. So channel implement as two strings, which um, both of them are 24 bytes in size. So totaling a 48 bytes. What I did is pack all of that information into 64 bits or eight bytes instead. So uh, that is a six uh, X difference in size of your data. Uh, and I encoded it as follows. So I basically had a two, these are called the bit fields. Um, and I will leave in the description, the link uh, to the CPP reference for you to have a look how they're used. So uh, this basically says uh, type representation is UN64T for status, but I want to use only two bits to represent this. And then uh, following there, so obviously two bits is enough because we only have three values, right? Can represent maximum of four, but we only have three. So that's fine. Uh, the length uh, can uh, represent it here with four bits. So four bits maximum uh, representation is 15 values, um, uh, but uh, the maximum string size is 10 characters here. So uh, 15 is perfect for us. So four bits is enough. And then we have obviously uh, the main value. So this is representing the actual string value. So this these are um, 50 bits. So we have maximum of 10 characters, five bits per character. So five bits rep can represent maximum up to um, 31 uh, in decimal, but we only need to represent zero to 26. So eight to Z characters in lower case. So that's it. So therefore 10 characters, five bits per character, 50 bits. So totally, uh, we using here 56 uh, bits, which is seven bytes, and it's awesome. It's enough, right? Um, so we can represent exactly the same, and um, we use six times less space to do so. Furthermore, what we have is uh, everything's encoded as an integer, and integer comparisons and assignments are generally just faster than um, anything else, uh, especially string comparisons or assignments. You don't have to do uh, a lot of copying. There are no loops, no size checks. Sizes are already known. So um, on top of the size of a problem being much smaller, um, also the uh, CPU instructions to run uh, operations on that type of uh, structure is just better. Uh, you you basically they are faster in general, so the hash table is uh, similar to what he had. Um, so we had a uh, constant size twenty six uh, twenty six entries, uh, and then um, so these are our entries. Uh, I do have the init table which basically uh, nulls it. Um, however, I use uh, I cannot set it to zero because never you used is value of one. Um, I could have done just, you know, assign, uh, you know, uh, value one to all the entries, but I wanted to be explicit saying, so the status is never used one and the rest of them is zero. Um, so, uh, I pay a little penalty here of initializing this because it's not as fast as just zeroing everything. However, I'm, uh, prepared to pay, pay that price. Uh, so in my algorithm, I could compare and assign zeros rather than ones or twos um, and because it basically saves me space and time um, because init table will be called once while add entry and delete entry will be called multiple times, right? 
So now uh, get characters that so this is the code which decodes that um, a specific data structure back into a character value, but the character representing 0 to 26, uh, still not within the ASCII character range, but that is done somewhere else. Um, so get character, what it does, uh, you basically um, compute the indexed value. You, you take that value and you shift um, uh, the value to the right um, by um, the index. So given an index, so let's say you want a third character. So the third character, we know that are um, there are 15 bits um, offset because you have five bits per character. So you take the index, you multiply it by those five bits and you uh, bit shift to the right. Um, uh, so to the low bits, uh, your entire um, value, right? Um, so that now the low bits represent exactly what you want there. So then you produce a mask saying, I want only the uh, low five bits here. That's what mask represents. And then what we do is just and it together to extract the actual bits um, uh, from the index value, which represents something. So, you know, A, B, C, D, or whatever it is. So uh, zero to 26 are extracted here. So, and then we obviously just static cast to uh, char and return as a result. So this is the get index. So this is like a natural index that, uh, because it's indexed for the last character, again, this hash algorithm makes no sense, but it is what it is. So I, I think uh, Chano explained it as, um, it, uh, university students are taught to follow instructions um, and requirements rather than doing anything particularly useful. Um, so, I, and we'll follow that. So our uh, add entry um, implementation just basically checks uh, if our natural index is already occupied and the values match, then we don't have to do anything. Otherwise, if it's not occupied, uh, then we uh, basically set it to occupied and we assign um, the value of that entry um, that we're trying to insert. Otherwise, what we do is we produce an operational index, which is a natural index plus one uh, modded to table size. And then we do a while loop over all entries uh, saying um, as soon as we find, so while it's occupied, we just keep skipping. And then when we find one, which is free, we just assign that entry. And then again, setting it to occupy. So fairly simple implementation, nothing complicated here. Um, maybe it looks a little larger than what uh, Chano did. Um, but yeah, so remove entries similar. So we basically produce a natural index, we assign an operational index. And then what we do is we um, go ahead and we look for value that is uh, occupied and values match. And th if those two match, we assign the tombstone and zero zero to our um, entry, we break otherwise we continue looping. Um, so the operational index is uh, the operational plus one modded to table size. So obviously, so uh, we wouldn't have any overflows and obviously it stops. Uh, get output is pretty much exactly the same way. We want to only print the occupied entries, but we, because we don't use string concatenation or string streams, um, what we do is produce a buffer saying maximum of 26 entries, 10 characters per entry plus a one white space, maximum is uh, 286 um, bytes here. But what we want to do instead is we just say um, five cache line size um, buffer will suffice here. So we mem set and then for every occupied, we go through all the characters. So we use that function to call get char, but then we move it into a printable uh, ASCII character range by adding uh, so 0 to 26 to uh, the literal A uh, character, which basically puts them uh, A to Z uh, ASCII range for printable characters, which is awesome. And then we just basically assign it to string and return it. Um, as you notice, the channels um, get output and mine are ret basically returning strings. This is again because we have these um, uh, test cases um, so and we wanted the code to match. So there would be no performance difference between those two bits, um, you know, returning strings and whatnot. So uh, to keep it compliant, I used um, 
string, but obviously I probably wouldn't do that in um, production code. Uh, I would uh, call to compute the size first. Um, uh, and then when computed size is, is returned, you basically pass in the um, pointed to a buffer allocated to that size or larger that the output can be written to. So compute entry is actually used um, right here from uh, from main where we actually process the buffers. So the compute entry um, takes in the um, begin pointer and a uh, pointer to pointer to the end pointer, which can be reassigned from compute entry. And while the uh, string is uh, not finished or it's not a space, we basically take any character we subtract a uh, ASCII character A, so moving our values from uh, a range of ASCII characters to 0 to 26. Um, we shift it by I, so for each character we basically um, assign 5 bits, so we move by 5 bits, so we shift it by 5 bits. So the first character will be in the low bits, then uh, 5 bits further, then 5 bits further, and, five. and then we take the existing value, and we or it with a computed value and obviously assign back the end PTR. Uh, so if it's uh, an end, just return an end. If it's a space, we increment that string by another one and assign it. So our code could look like that. So we take a compute entry, we take a buffer, we take a reference of buffer. So the buffers keep kind of a, um, refreshing itself to a new place where it needs to start. So again, the uh, first uh, in the input, so the first um, character is the operator, so add or delete. And then you have um, uh, following characters up to a space as an operand. Uh, so we grab that and encode it into an entry. And then the fast implementation is exactly the same way. So we just call main, we return result, and in debug mode, we just um, actually verify that our results are exactly the same rather than uh, being different to ensure compliance. So I hope I explained everything in detail um, and it is clear how this thing works. If something is not clear or you um, want to challenge me on how I implemented it, maybe it's too difficult, maybe something doesn't make sense, maybe you don't understand why uh, these bit fields work the way they do. Um, first, follow the links in the description. Um, ensure to watch the Chanus um, implementation as well. Uh, just, um, you know, to say that I did not misrepresent him. Uh, maybe I did. I hope not. Um, so if I did, don't be angry at me. Correct, correct me and I will, I will try to be better at it. And I think um, with that, you can find my uh, email in the description if you have problems, if you want some code reviewed, uh, if you want uh, help with any problems to solve, if you have a performance problem, uh, send me an email. Let's talk. Um, and as usual, please subscribe to the channel, like this video, and take care now. Happy writing fast code. <laughs> Bye.